I'm trying to squeeze in a quick video before the construction guys get here and start making noise. I haven't been able to film anything for, I guess, almost three weeks because um, we're having the siding on the outside of our house replaced. Well, we're not doing it. Our property management company is doing it. We don't own our house. We rent. And it desperately needed to be done. And so they're getting that done. And they said it would take about a week. And that was three weeks ago. And um, they're maybe half finished at this point. <laughs> In their defense, we do get rain almost every afternoon, but they should know this by now and should plan around it, but, but they don't. Instead, they show up at about noon, and then they start working, and of course they have to stop at around 4 o'clock because it's going to rain off and on for about two hours, okay? And then they stay, you know, they wait out the rain or they go eat dinner or whatever, and then they're here until 8.30, 8.45, whenever it gets dark. You know, if they would start at 8 in the morning, they would have so much more time to get things done before the rain, but I guess they've not yet figured that out. Whatever. You know what? I'm not paying for it. It's not my house. It's not my thing. I'm just trying to be patient while they get it done. But they do make an awful lot of noise when they're removing the old siding, and I can't film. And we're looking for another house, by the way. We need to move, not, not because of the siding thing, but really mainly because um, Jason has an hour and a half commute to work every day one way. <laughs> okay, that, that's kind of a long way. Houston's big, you know. Um, so we need to move further south, closer to his work. So we're looking, we're looking for something down there that'll meet our needs, which will, which will be a challenge because I love this house. I just don't like my property management company, and Jason definitely doesn't like that commute. So we'll work something out. Anyway, um, so filming has been scarce for that reason and because, you know, I'm busy as usual. We have house guests coming this weekend, so I'm trying to get the house straightened up for that. Um, you know, usual things. But I wanted to do a flip through of my drop paper book that I made. And I've put some pictures of this on uh, Facebook, on my wall and on various groups that I belong to, but I thought I would do a quick flip through so you can see it um, more up close and personal. I made this out of, these are drop papers that I've used um, when I line my work area when I'm crafting, painting, whatever. They get covered with paint and blobs of glue and pieces of tape and, you know, stamped images and all kinds of stuff. And sometimes I use them as is, just, you know, the way they turn out. Other times I will add stuff to them. Let me show you, before I do this, let me show you this one. I just did this. This was a piece of drop paper. It's actually um, finger paint paper. There's glare. Sorry. It's a sheet of, I bought a pad of finger paint paper that I use to line my work area because it's cheap and it's kind of slick like palette paper. So, you know, it's like a poor man's palette paper. <laughs> but what I did, um, you know, it was all painty and gross, but this had glue on it that, I'm trying to adjust my lighting so there's not so much glare. And it's not help. Thing. Okay, that is um, outside my skill set. All right, okay, live with it, whatever. Anyway, it had glue on it, the kind of glue that dries sticky. So um, I can't even remember what I used to glue, what I used the glue for, but anyway, it was covered on my drop paper and it was sticky. And, um, you know, I could have covered it with paint or whatever, but I was afraid I would forget about it, and then I would lay a good piece of paper on top of it to start painting on, which, of course, would stick to the drop paper forever, and I didn't want that. So I had to get rid of that drop paper, and, you know, I could have just thrown it away, but am I going to do that? Well, heck no. So I started collaging it with bits of scrap papers, which you can't hardly see because <coughs> they're all covered up and colored over. 
but underneath, and some of them I outlined with pit pen big brush markers, but you can see, see this one, that's a piece of a, um, a border that I had, and there's a napkin, and there's some little round um, pieces of something that I drew a flower on and then I didn't like, so I went over it with a pearly pen. There's a punched image. There's a, that's a candy wrapper, and there's a, a Chinese newspaper. See, there's just all kinds. I just went through my drawer of scraps, and that's a piece of a map image from a calendar. And there's a, a another border right there. So yeah, I just went through my scraps and pretty much covered the whole thing with scraps. Glued them down with Mod Podge, um, let it dry, and then went in with my pit pens and outlined and then kind of smudged some, you know, pit pens are really blendy. So I just kind of smudged some color on there. <coughs> Decided it looked good, but <coughs> st excuse me, still needed something more. So I added some flowers. I should get my other flowers. Okay, hang on, let me go get that. Okay, um, I got my flowers I'm going to show you, and that's what these are. These are five petal flowers, and I did a, um, I showed how to cut these out. You can cut out a perfect five petal, pl five petal flower, <laughs> five petal flower really easily with this little folding technique, and it's in my video I did about the deli paper flowers, deli wrap flowers. Something like that, whatever I called it. Anyway, that video shows you how to fold and cut them. And then they were colored with pit pens and with gel pens and uh, paint markers and stuff like that. And I glued them on top. Um, once you start making those flowers, you, you can't really stop. I kind of call them, they're like crafter's crack because they're sort of like you know, paper beads and stuff. You really can't stop making those once you start either. But these, they're so easy to do in different shapes and they come out perfect every time with that folding technique. Um, it's really simple. And these I have colored, let's see, these look like all markers, pick pens. And I do them on, most of them are on um, book pages or magazine pages. The ones I did with the pit pens are on kind of a, a lightly coated magazine page, so the pens blended. But I did some others. See, these are more bold. I didn't even bother blending those. Those are like full strength. That one's more blendy. So I did some both ways. And then just, you know, doodled on them. I made some big ones. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but, you know, someday I'll figure it out and then I'll be really glad I have them. That. And this one is, um, it was a piece of notebook, not notebook paper, but out of a spiral notebook, one of my daughters that she, uh, was going to throw out. And some of it has her handwriting on it, but there's some blank pages. And these were colored with Prismacolor pencils and then doodled with different markers and gel pens. So I love, these are more colored pencil ones, and I love the way that they turned out. I think they're really pretty. They're softer. Um, you know, and if you put on enough layers of the colored pencil, you can't even see the lines of the paper. Now, if you're layers of color are really light, you can kind of see the lines, but I don't mind, you know, because if, when I use recycled papers like that, I kind of like when it shows through to show that it's a recycled paper. These are more with markers. That was a colored pencil. That one was fun. I should do more like that. I like the little dots. I used um, Posca paint pen. They have a white one that has kind of a fine point. And that's what I use for those dots. But see, these, and I still have some on the couch <laughs> that I'm cut out and I'm still 
working on and coloring because it's a perfect couch craft to do because you can do it while you're watching TV, you know, because it's just markers and pencils and scissors and paper. That's all you need. Um, it's not messy. So it's a perfect couch craft. It's like doing crack on the couch. Crafters crack on the couch. That's what this is. So anyway, that's what I used on here. Some of those flowers. Glued them down. Um, did some extra doodling around them. Not really doodling, but just um, uh, paint pens and things. And then I drew with the um, pit pens the little leaves and vines and used gel pens to kind of highlight. So that is my um, piece of that. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It would make a good book cover. It would hold up well. On the back side, I lined it with some uh, phone book pages just to, you know, give it some strength. So I could make a whole another or a couple of books out of it. I don't know. But I like it. It makes me happy just to look at it. And I enjoyed making it. So, you know what? That's all that counts. Who cares what I do with it? Back to this one. Um, for the closure on this, I used, okay, these things kind of shed. These are some uh, of the sari, the sari, silk sari ribbons. It's like the um, strips and selvages from the um, sari fabric. And I just got a whole bunch of them. I think someone gave these to me, and I'm trying to remember. It was either Patty or it was Lugene, and I can't remember which one of them gave them to me because they both gave me really generous Happy Mail. Um, but this was in some Happy Mail. So I just tied a bunch of them together, knots on each end. This I got, I actually probably had one like this back in the 80s, but this is not mine. Um, but it's a belt buckle that, remember, we used to use in the 80s where we would wear the long scarves as a belt and we had these big brass different shaped hammered brass buckle things that we'd use to tie our scarves yeah well that's what that is and I got this in a box of stuff that I got on eBay sometimes I buy boxes of junk jewelry on eBay and there's almost always a belt buckle or two in there so that's the closure that I used for it I thought it went well with the paper and I made the cover of the book a lot bigger than it needed to be because um, the signatures that go inside are going to vary. And I also made it expandable. Each one, each signature is sewn in individually, so I can keep adding signatures this way, you know, and for quite a while until my my edge doesn't fold over anymore. So that's why I left the long flap so that I can add more signatures and this thing can just get huge. You know, it can get a, a spine on it a good probably six inches wide if need be. So this can be a big honking book. And I just did a simple long stitch for each one. And this was, um, <coughs> excuse me, some uh, drop papers. This wasn't just one sheet. This was a couple of sheets of uh, different drop papers that I collaged onto one. It looks like I used another piece of that finger paint paper. And uh, just used some scraps of drop papers so that it was the right size and shape because most of my drop papers are not exactly rectangle. I end up tearing off pieces and you know but I didn't add any kind of painting or embellishment to the drop papers this is how they were and on the inside I used scraps I had a bunch of scraps of painted papers um, drop papers some jelly prints just any kind of painted paper piece of paper with paint on it. I just glued it down and made that um, the inside decoration. And I did that all with Mod Podge and then it, when it was completely dry I gave it just one coat of 
um, varnish, just a polycrylic varnish. And I normally don't go for this really shiny finish like this, but for this particular thing, I like it because it's, you know, it's, it's weird, it's funky, it's different. So I like the glossy finish on it. And the polycrylic stays really flexible, so I don't have to worry about that. My signatures, I put them together, and these just happen to come out all about the same size, and a few of them I kind of tore down to make them the same size. But that doesn't mean that every future signature has to be this size. In fact, I've got another one that's almost ready to add. This one, which is quite a bit bigger, and that's fine. I will, I may tear it down a little bit so that it fits in the cover, but it doesn't have to be the same size as the other ones. Uh oh, that's one of my favorites. Sometimes if the back of a drop paper is plain, see these were both kind of plain on the back, so I will end up gluing those together. If there's decorations on both sides, then I'll just leave it. And these are two pieces. That's a different piece of drop paper scrap that I just glued with that one. So assembling the um, signatures was really a lot funner than I thought it would be. That's not something I normally really enjoy a whole lot, to tell you the truth. Now these, I went through and were on each um, page, not each signature, but on each page, I put a strip of clear packing tape. I know you probably can't see it, but every single page and every signature has a strip of clear packing tape just on one side. I didn't put it on both sides of the page, just on one side. And that is because these pages are, a lot of them are this manila paper, which is extremely brittle. Um, some of them are just very flimsy. This is aluminum foil. Um, which is, you know, extremely brittle. You can tear right through it. So I put the clear packing tape just to give it a little bit more sturdiness so that the threads wouldn't pull through so easily. I don't want to do this and have the whole page rip out. So that was really the only prep work I did for each page. Folding them up, you know, um, made my signatures just randomly, put some together. I put them a... This is about, no, I don't remember, three quarters of an inch. It doesn't look like three quarters, does it? Maybe a half an inch? No, I think it's three quarters of an inch apart. Eyeballed it kind of really. <clears throat> I think I did measure across this way, but I just kind of eyeballed the um, holes. They don't have to be perfect. They ended up, they're, they're close. They're close enough. Um, but yeah, this, this kind of book, it doesn't need perfect. So, see this had um, paint on both sides. <coughs> so I didn't layer anything over it. This one, these are two different papers that were both blank on the back. So I glued them together. I obviously did not glue them well. I'll have to go in and tweak that. I did try to make sure that anything that had a glue blob on it, um, I did try to make sure that the glue wasn't sticky because I don't want my pages to stick together too bad. And this really, this makes me happy just looking through it like this, just flipping through and looking at all the colors and textures and paint. You know, I'm perfectly happy with this, but I also would have no problem going in here and playing with some paint techniques, <clears throat> you know, to use it as sort of a, a um, practice journal for different painting techniques or, or to, to um, see what different colors look like together or to mix colors and see if they look okay, you know, that kind of thing. So it's... Um, if you do something like this, it can be just a, 
an artist book to flip through and look at, or it can be a functional journal, either way. <coughs> Some of these I don't even remember doing. Some I, I look at and go, oh yeah, I remember what I was doing when I made that mess. And then others I have absolutely no memory of. <laughs> A little weird. I was using glitter that day. That's unusual. But I can just see this book getting really, really fat and happy. I'm going to add more signatures. I might even sew in some tip ends, you know, like a fold out here or, or tape a tip in into one of the signatures. You know, this, this is not a book that is going to be finished anytime soon because it's, I can just add to it in all kinds of ways. Maps are some of my favorite drop papers to use. Some of these are Easter egg dye. They're not even paint at all. So there you have it. A fat, happy, fun, journal made up of nothing but drop paper and scraps and junk and um, I really can't wait for, to add to this and, and to watch it grow and then to start you know um, adding some paint and stuff to it and adding some tip ends and things like that I think this is going to be fun okay you know when I made this see this aluminum foil see how it looks all kind of aged and rusty. I know there's a glare. Let's see, can you tell? Okay, I read on Pinterest. You know, if I read it on Pinterest, I have to do it because it's like a law. That um, you can polish silver by putting it in boiling water with some uh, baking soda, salt, and a piece of aluminum foil. Which, of course, I had to try. I have, actually I have a lot of silver that used to belong to my grandmother. And it's always tarnished. But um, occasionally I do polish it. And that technique does work. I get a big stock pot on the stove, put boiling water, probably a quarter, half a cup of uh, baking soda, baking, no, baking soda, and then just kind of a handful of salt and a sheet of foil and then you put your tarnished silver in there and it really only takes a few seconds you can actually watch the tarnish go away it turns bright silver then you pull your silver piece out and it's all clean and ready to go and the tarnish from the silver gets transferred onto the aluminum foil so after you do several pieces your aluminum foil starts to look like this and I keep it because it's pretty. And I have, I don't know, there's several pieces. I don't, there's one piece of it that has more of a kind of a coppery look. And it, it comes out different every time. And it comes out really pretty. <laughs> so you can polish your silver and create a lovely background paper all at the same time. That's right. You heard it here. <laughs> so that's what that was all about. Anyway, that's my book, my drop paper book, and my 1980s cheesy closure. And I can't believe I got this done before the noise started. I'm so excited. Um, gosh, maybe I'll try to do another one before they get here. Hmm. Okay, we'll see. For now, the end.